Learning to read and write is critical for every child's success in school and beyond. Research shows that children's ability to read is shaped during their first five years of life. Young children learn early literacy skills through the commitment, support, and expertise of many people. Families, teachers and paraprofessionals, program directors, principals, superintendents, and policymakers. As a society, we are directing more attention to the importance of teaching children to read. Despite this, many children struggle with learning to read and write. Children from low-income families are especially at risk for reading difficulties. We have a crisis in, in our country, and we're in Connecticut. And Connecticut has the largest gap in achievement in students between what we refer to as the haves and the have-nots. And this gap exists when five-year-olds show up at the schoolroom door. There's already a difference. In 2008, Eastern Connecticut State University Center for Early Childhood Education set out to change this with the support of a U.S. Department of Education Early Reading First grant. Early Reading First was designed to improve the school readiness of young children, especially children from low-income families. So for our project in Wyndham, Connecticut, we worked in 14 classrooms, including three that instruction was done primarily in Spanish. We called the project Community Partners for Early Literacy, and the partners were the Wyndham Early Childhood Center, which is part of the Wyndham Public School, and the Child and Family Development Resource Center. And the primary goal of our project was to improve the language and early literacy skills of the children in those two centers. And over the course of the three-year project, we worked with over 500 preschool children and impact their early literacy. The whole project from its inception was designed around the fact that we have a very diverse community here in Wyndham. Wyndham has a large Latino community, various groups within the community, Puerto Rican, Mexican, South American, Central American. The grant was really conceived around how do we address the issues of early childhood education and early literacy development for both English-speaking students and English learners in the community. We had a lot of successes and we also learned a lot of lessons, lessons that I think will be useful for other programs and districts wanting to improve early literacy. I was thrilled with the idea that I could be studying during my working hours and I didn't need to go home and go back to school at night tired and not motivated because of the hundreds of things that we have to do being a teacher. We want to first describe what the, com the structure of oral language is. Every two weeks, teachers and paraprofessionals attended professional development trainings held at their own schools, while substitute teachers covered the classrooms. The very first thing we did was to assess the early literacy knowledge of all of the teaching staff who were going to be involved in the project. And then that information about their strengths and their areas of need was used to design the professional development. The principal investigators divided the teaching staff into four groups based on their knowledge. And then they were able to provide professional development that was very targeted in its content and its delivery method to each of those groups. We had the PD couched or embedded in credit-bearing classes. So in that way, we could give assignments that had to be done in the classroom. This one is we're going on a lion hunt. The professional development was very, very positive experience for me. The assignments that they asked us to do really were meaningful for my profession and my, my classroom and helping my children grow. I feel like I learned a lot. I feel like an expert now. Room? And take a guess at what room the, those girls are in. To help staff implement what they learned in professional development sessions, a highly trained literacy coach was assigned to each classroom. Literacy coach Sandy Grancelli worked closely with teacher Claudia Ahern over the course of the grant. The reason the literacy coach is important is because when you do professional development, when you stand up and talk to talk at people basically, that doesn't mean it's going to be translated into classroom practice. And so the literacy coach is like that guide by the side, somebody who can support the teacher in that clinical 
implementation of what they've learned in the classroom. When the CPEL project was first introduced to us and we were told that we were going to have a literacy coach, it was very intimidating. Preschool teachers like their classroom. They like things set in a certain way. It would just seemed overwhelming that someone was going to come in and would they judge me? How would I work with this person? Would we get along? Coaching is non-evaluative. You are in the classroom working side by side with the teacher, helping them to find their best teaching uh, methods uh, to improve what they do in their classrooms. Say it with me. Layer. 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 The next word that I want it was an extraordinary opportunity because I didn't feel alone. And when I didn't know, when I had my ideas like all over the place thinking, how am I going to do this? I had my literacy coach coming and modeling to me, calming me down, sharing her experiences with me. This is a bunny. I think that when you're working with adults, as with kids too, you really have to tailor what you're doing to that person's strengths and particular needs. You really have to differentiate for everybody. It's an A. He's Could be, yeah. Mm -hmm. I had a literacy coach that I had a good rapport with. She was able to give me ideas and I was able to frankly say, yeah, give me all the ideas and I'll ignore them. But I never ignored them. I always tried to figure out how they worked with my personality, with the children in my room, so with the structure in my room. It's all part of a, yeah, a structure. Yeah, it's part of the whole thing. And the, and the structure is something that I can handle. Yeah. What our teachers and our coaches did was have a coaching conference. And they would talk about the students in the class and what was just learned in PD and how the teacher um, feels about his or her ability to implement that in the classroom. And then they would come to some understanding of what would happen next. Did the teacher want to see the coach model a certain strategy in the classroom, or did the teacher want the coach to come in to observe the teacher implementing that strategy? Priscilla, what we're going to do is when, when you want change, you have to support the person who you want to change. And, and I, feel, I feel like I've, I've changed a whole bunch. work of the grant that's been so powerful and so meaningful to me is having the opportunity to provide the differentiated professional development that we provided to teachers and to paraprofessionals and one of the ways that we differentiated it was to offer the paraprofessionals the opportunity to take the training in either English or Spanish. Si no hay tres interacciones o no hay una palabra algo así. It was very nice to be able to guide them and to work with them and, and to challenge their fears and take them out of, of their comfort zone to accomplish some tasks. And once that was done, it was very rewarding. Lo más importante que fue en mi idioma, creo que eso fue una forma de ayudarme a crecer. Porque yo nunca había oído, aunque lo hacía, Nunca había oído sobre eh, la conciencia fonológica o sobre la importancia que tiene la narrativa. Yo dije, yo tengo que aprenderlo, yo tengo que poner atención en la clase para saber de qué manera yo lo puedo poner en práctica en el salón de clase. When we worked with the paraprofessionals, we gave them the exact same instruction in terms of the content that we gave to teachers who had bachelor's and master's degrees and some of them beyond. We delivered the instruction in a way that was meaningful, dependent upon their background and experience. So what happened over time was that the teachers and the paraprofessionals had the same knowledge base. They had the same vocabulary. They could communicate with each other. We could feel the difference in the room because I didn't feel alone anymore, just having a person to help me. I felt like if I had another teacher in the room.
What do you have? When I used to read to the children, I used to just read along and read along and just finish the book and maybe ask questions at the end of the book. Now I focus on ways to read that book. Swishy, swashy. We ask questions, we say beginning, middle, end. We talk about the characters, the setting, all that. And I learned all that through the program. It's, it's simple things that we didn't do before, but now we're like aware of it. Going on a bear hunt, we're gonna catch a big one. I think that really opened the classroom teacher's eyes, too, about what they could do in the classroom that really would take the load off of the classroom teacher and also enhance the whole classroom in every way. Children were getting more attention because there were more knowledgeable people in the classroom. You could see how children were improving based upon this type of differentiated small group instruction that they were getting. and it, it was painless. It was really painless. De todo lo que aprendí en este proceso, lo he podido incorporar con los niños. Lo primero cuando nos sentamos, que la hora de leer un, un libro, so lo primero que nos, lo, al principio les enseñamos, que yo aprendí con, con C-P-E-L, mm -hmm. fue este, enseñarles la portada de, al niño, lo que, la, las partes de un libro, La portada, la contraportada, el lomo, del, el lomo del libro, que el niño vea cómo se va a leer, que es de izquierda a derecha, de que sepan que el, el, las letras tienen sus sonidos. Todo ese conjunto se aprendió al principio. We were really able to democratize the knowledge of the most recent research in early literacy for this community. When the teachers started seeing positive outcomes and change in their students, that's when they became believers. So now we're going to listen for a word that rhymes. Assessment of the children was another essential aspect. They were tested for a variety of language and early literacy skills. Testing was conducted in Spanish for Spanish-speaking children. The results helped identify the greatest areas of need. We need to know where kids are, where they begin and so that we can um, estimate how far off the mark they are in terms of what is typical development. And then we need to be able to provide different tiers of instruction and extra instruction to children who aren't progressing the way we would like them to progress. All right, ready? What does it mean to screen children? Dr. Anderberg and Dr. Ruby trained teachers and paraprofessionals to gather data about how children were doing in their classrooms. For example, Get It, Got It, Go, a progress monitoring tool, provided immediate feedback to teachers about how their instruction was impacting children's learning. When we first started Get It, Got It, Go, um, I remember thinking, oh, th this is just crazy. There's just no way they're going to be able to do all of this, and why bother? <laughs> but from the information that we gathered, Together, I really see the value in using the progress monitoring tool to help with the next steps of planning and instruction because we need that information. Each classroom's literacy environment was assessed three times a year. This gave teachers information they could use to improve their teaching practices and classroom setup and help literacy coaches target their support to each teacher's greatest need. We did a environmental assessment. It's called the ELCO, the Early Language and Literacy Classroom Observation Tool. The ELCO measures how well a classroom environment exhibits factors known to contribute to developing young children's early literacy skills. For example, it measures how much teachers support vocabulary development, complex conversations, and phonological awareness. It measures the quality and frequency of book reading, the kinds of books available, how books are organized, and the availability of materials that support print awareness and early writing. I'm going to give you a word that starts with B. B, B, B. If you look at my class now and you look at it two years ago, the amount of literacy, the amount of print, 
where it's located, the way print is, is addressed, the way books are read, the effort made to try to integrate whatever book, whatever story, whatever happens at Circle into several other parts of the room. I mean, I think all of that has changed positively. Se llama Engaging families to support children's literacy development at home was a critical component of the CPOL project. The children of families come with tremendous resources. In large part, we're talking about a community of low socioeconomic status, low educational attainment. However, they certainly have life experience, they certainly have cultural experiences that go beyond our borders. They have language, they have stories, and when we tap into their skills and, and amplify their ability to engage with our school system, they're, they're more than ready and willing partners. When children are seeing that they're getting the same message about what's important, and they're seeing the same strategies and hearing some of the same language at home and in school, it's synergistic. This is the, the ideal time to get parents on board, to get parents more involved regularly in classrooms in the preschool years and, and help them to understand how to navigate the system so that they're more comfortable with that when kids get into the upper grades. One successful strategy was to send home literacy lending kits with each child every week. We put together literacy kits in a variety of languages, English, Spanish, Russian, Arabic, to meet the needs of the children who, had, who spoke a variety of different languages at home. The literacy kits included books, but they also included suggestions to parents about questions that they could ask about what they were reading of their child to foster more oral language and greater comprehension. The books that she received, she loved them, and she talked about them. She wanted to read them as soon as she, she took it out of her cubby. The literacy kits also included a journal where children could write or draw a response to the book, and parents could also write down a comment about what their child got out of the book. Nosotros escribimos cada fin de semana porque yo lo dejo a él que lo haga fin de semana para que él practique bien lo que vimos del libro, lo vea y él después, yo le digo que escriba lo que él más le gustó. The literacy kits worked really well in my class, to the point that some kids that I thought that they couldn't retell a story, I noticed that they could do it when I read the feedback from their parents. Now more often I, I find myself asking more questions, not just two or three. Um, thanks to the kit and its questions inside. And we reflect more on the stories. We say, oh, what if something happened just like the book? Or when we're driving around town or out of town and we see something that's similar to a book, we bring up the book. We knew that children needed to have books in their home that they could call their very own. And so the first two years, we bought a lot of books, and we let every child pick a few books that uh, really spoke to them, and it, that was great. But the third year, we tried something different that I think was really powerful. Every month, each child got a copy of the book that was being read to them in class. I love that the children got 10 books to take home. I think it was great that their name was inside the front cover of each book. It really gave the child ownership that it was their book and they got to keep it. Whether or not someone read to them at home, they could hold the book, they could take a picture walk, they could pretend read. I knew each child was going to have 10 books at home. If the child spoke Spanish at home, we gave her two books, one in English and one in Spanish. Sending home the book that they were reading in class meant that children were really excited to share that book at home. They knew what the book was about, they knew that they liked it, so they were highly motivated to try to get someone in their family to read it to them. And then that reinforced what she was learning in the classroom. 
the parents having the book and reading to them again and listening to what they brought from school, it was a real way to connect families and the school. And this is very important because they are little. They spend only two hours and a half with us, so we don't teach them alone. We need the families. And when we have this together, it's amazing how they grow. Another successful strategy for involving families was parent workshops and family nights. At these events, the literacy coaches share techniques to help parents support their children's emerging literacy. One technique that was shared is called dialogic reading. Le Lechuga. Los talleres de padre me han ayudado para poder hacer pausas cuando yo leo con mi, con mi hijo y para poderle hacer mejor las preguntas y parar cuando tengo que parar para poderlo escuchar cuando él me está describiendo algo que está pasando o que él ve en el libro. We want the child to be interacting with the reader and interacting with the book and developing a language. It's all about language. No. Sentamos los tres, mi hija mayor, mi hijo y yo, mm -hmm. y, y ella también le leía libros a su hermano. Y esto ha mejorado más porque um, hemos creado una rutina donde podemos sentarnos los tres y es el mejor momento que podemos agarrar para, para compartir juntos. I think one of the biggest takeaways for this project was really about believing in children's potential regardless of their home environment. If you provide teachers and paraprofessionals with the tools, the knowledge, and the supports, they can really challenge children to learn and grow in ways we might not have expected. When we began the project, the teachers definitely felt like the children were limited in what they could learn. I was really nervous that Sometimes what your expectations are is exactly what you get. But because most of the teachers were open to what we brought to the project, they started to get feedback from parents. They started to see results from the Get It, Gotta Go and the other assessments that were done. That pretty soon they were realizing that age, family, was not necessarily a boundary. I'm pleasantly surprised that the children can understand the books. Last year, I felt like the books were not available to the children's language and, and ability. And now this year, I'm looking at them in a different way. And I think that the kids can handle that more sophisticated language. And I'm really pleased by that experience because it helps me to have higher expectations for my students. It wasn't until these kids start really writing and manipulating language that I realized that it could be done and it can be done in their first language. To keep the first language, to be competent in it and fluent and be able to transfer those skills to learn the second language. I mean you learn to read only once so if you learn to read in your native language and you are solid on that, what you have to do is just transfer those skills. Si no sale adentro derecho, ah, tiene que ver arte, está bien. I'm sort of beginning to get the idea that teaching children who come from other language backgrounds is not really rocket science, it's understanding where the child is, figuring out what kind of supports they need. Uh, and offering that. It makes it a little more complex, but you know, that's what's the fun of this job. Oh, what is this, Mommy? Can I loved kids? the work that we did together with uh, oral language that? development. That was an area I had to learn Who's more that? about. I feel like I wasn't helping my children Cause grow know. the way I would want them to grow. So They're having help with the oral language development, with the storytelling, all in, in very child-friendly ways that made it really fun and really engaging helped me to develop my language as well. And then I saw the, such wonderful growth in the children's language development. Nose, so you're gonna touch your nose and you're gonna touch your toes. Are you ready? We used to hear at the beginning of the project that we wouldn't even do rhyming with the three-year-olds, that they just weren't ready for it. 
And then we found that some of the scores for the three-year-olds were higher than the four-year-olds. And then they started pulling out all the plugs and they started realizing that I'm going to present this to these children and they are all going to learn and they are going to reach bounds and, uh, that I never even knew existed before. And that has been such a rewarding thing to see in this project. I'm totally surprised about how much kids can learn and how exciting they are at this age and how much change can happen and the potential in preschool for dramatic change. Young children can be assessed, they can receive direct instruction, and they can make tremendous progress when they do. We certainly saw some real closing, we think, of the academic achievement gap through this program. That typical gap that we see with the higher kids being up here and the lower kids being down here, we're talking about language. That's going to impact everything that they do in school. And so by addressing these emergent literacy skills in a very planful and informed manner and keeping track of how kids are progressing, we have a chance to close or lessen that gap before children get to kindergarten. Through this project, we learned that to be successful with preschool age children, you need to provide professional development that is embedded in what's going on in the classroom. You need to invest in paraprofessionals and believe that they can be true partners in the instructional team. You have to involve families in meaningful ways. You need to use assessment data to drive your instruction. And most important, you have to believe that if you challenge children in developmentally appropriate ways, they are capable of doing amazing things.